Mic check. Okay, I think you can all hear me. Let's talk a little bit more about statistics. There will be several lectures. These are not required that you attend. I just want to give you all some really great uh, background here. So let's talk about summarizing statistics, summarizing data, frequency distributions and tables and graphs. And don't worry about um, fully understanding this today. There will be assignments, there will be practice. There's also the uh, requirement from Cengage that has additional videos. I'll continue to post stuff. I hope you're enjoying the class. Uh, I know it's very asynchronous, but please, please ask questions along the way. So let's talk about frequency and frequency distribution. Simple frequency distribution, frequency distribution for group data, steps to summarize group data, cumulative frequency, relative frequency, relative percent, cumulative relative frequency and cumulative percent, percentile points and ranks, frequency distribution for ungrouped data, graphing distribution for continuous data, and graphing dis distributions for discrete and categorical data. Now, if you feel there's a lot of information, you should absolutely go to this website. Let's talk about the quantified itself. It's a great video. It's about, I would say about four or five minutes. I can certainly post this in the classroom as well if you would like me to. I think it might already be posted though. Pretty sure under chapter two, video resources. Anyways, if not, let me know. I'm here to help you guys out and looking forward to really having you enjoy stats and learn a lot about statistics. So let's grab a better mic here just to make sure this audio records well. So let's grab this mic and plug it in. And it should be a little something like, like that. Okay. So the next thing that we want to talk about, let me make sure we are still picking up. Okay, good. Looks like we are still absolutely picking up uh, audio here. So let's keep going. All right, frequency. This describes the number of times or how often something happens and the frequency distribution displays a summary display for the distribution of data. So, we want to talk about the frequency of scores. A lot of times it's a list of scores in terms of the frequency and the number of times that the thing actually occurs. So simple, simple frequency distribution is a summary. It displays frequency of scores falling within defined groups or intervals, group data in the distribution. And generally it's more clear. The frequency of each individual score or category or ungrouped data in a distribution. And then we have group data. The set of scores distributed in, in intervals. The frequency of each score can fall into any one interval. And an interval is a discrete range of values within which frequency of subset of scores is contained. This allows for easy identification of the issues. And you should be able to be keeping up with assignments and everything. There's a bit of a glitchy thing going on with the ability to uh, submit assignments and access the gradebook, but I'm absolutely on it and that'll be fixed very shortly. So if you can see the assignment and complete it, great. If you have any trouble submitting it, just tell me. I'll continue to give you guys assignments. And if I'm talking about an assignment here in class or lecturing, you ultimately will do that assignment. A lot of times I will walk you through the homework. Again, uh, email me if you have any issues, jkmac at ferrum.edu. You can call me 786-879, excuse me, 0179. So some steps to summarize group data. First, we wanna find the real range. Now the real range is one more than the difference between the largest and the smallest value. It's actually 0.5 above and below. So for example, if I have a range of one to 10, it's the real range is technically 0.5 to 10.5. And we'll do some assignments that I'll walk you through that will explain how to calculate that. Today, it's just about concepts, probably going to talk a little bit about the difference between grouped and un ungrouped data in a worksheet, which you'll also be able to complete on your own and submit with pausing me and having me walk you through it. So real range, one more than the difference between the largest and the smallest value. You want to find the interval width. The interval width is the range of scores in each interval. You want to divide the real range by the number of intervals that are chosen and round that quotient to the nearest whole number. Construct the frequency distribution 
the same number of intervals as in step number two. So to find the real range, the range 175 minus zero equals 175. The real range is 175 plus one is equal to 176. So some steps to summarize group data, the average time in minutes that 50 healthy American children watched television per day in the previous year is what we're looking at right here. So we wanna select the interval width. So choosing between five and 20, of course, will aid in legibility, understanding. So we'll pick 10 intervals, why 10 or 12? The interval width, the real range divided by the number of intervals. So 176 divided by 10, those are intervals, 17.6. We're gonna round that up to 18. Next, we're going to construct our frequency distribution. So some rules for simple frequency distribution. Each interval is going to be defined equidistant. They have to be the same. No interval overlaps. All values are rounded to the same degree of accuracy measured in the original data. You check the total counts in the distribution to the total number of counts made. So here's your intervals. Here's your frequency of the time the things are happening. The number or frequency of values contained in each interval the lower boundary is zero and the upper boundary is 17 for this interval. The interval width is 18 for all intervals. The total number of values measured in the data set, this equals the sum of the frequencies listed in the frequency distribution column. So how many times does this thing happen? That is the frequency. A simple frequency distribution for the average time in minutes at 50 healthy American children watch television per day in the previous year in this table, x the, the function of x denotes the column heading for the frequency of scores for each individual. Cumulative frequency distributes the sum of the frequencies across a series of intervals. Add from the bottom up, course preference, discuss in terms of less than, at or below, a certain value, or at most. Add from the top down, discuss in terms of greater than, at or above, a certain value or at least. Bottom up, we'll add frequencies beginning from and working up. The top frequency equals the total number of measures that are recorded. So this is your frequency distribution. Three plus three is five and see they keep going up in the amount. It's your bottom up. So we have three, six, 11, 18, 27, 38, 43, 45 and we're adding each frequency to the other frequency, which I may show you some stuff on percentiles and just a little bit more of that conceptually so that makes more sense. Uh, just keep up with these videos, understanding, ask me questions. I'm here to help. This course does move quickly. We are going to be covering 17 weeks in about eight weeks. So we'll probably clip along at about a chapter or two a week uh, right now, until I hear from people, the lectures will kind of be as soon as and quickly as I record them. I'll probably record realistically two or three lectures a, a week, more give or take a few, depending on what we need to get through. I know some of you might be ordering your books right now, might be getting your feet wet. So this week will probably be a little bit lighter than most. So relative frequency distributes proportion of scores in each interval equals a frequency and interval divided by the total frequency count, often used to summarize large data sets. So here are our intervals and here is the frequency. And here is the relative frequency. The total relative frequency equals one, or you can also think of it as say like 100%, but be careful because you wanna think about frequency like a proportion, and you wanna think about percentage like percentage of an amount, like 100, um, 10%, you know, things of that nature. So as we look at relative frequency, it equals frequency in, the, in an interval divided by total frequency count. This is often used to summar, summarize large data sets. So the relative percent, this distributes a percent of scores in each interval. You're going to multiply each relative percent by 100 and the sum of the relative percent is going to be equal to 100%. So your frequency distribution right here, uh, your relative percent, relative frequency. And as you can see, as we work down our columns here, 
total relative frequency is one, total relative percent is 100%. In terms of how often the thing happens, that's how you want to think about frequency. Frequency is very similar to a percent. And as you can see, just move the decimal over two places, the percent is the frequency. We go to the right two places, we have the percent. So cumulative relative frequency. This distributes the sum of relative frequencies across the series of intervals. This can be summarized from the bottom up or the top down. The total sum of relative frequencies is equal to one. A bottom up cumulative relative frequency table with calculations is shown in column four. So as you can see, the frequencies keep adding all the way up to the top, which is one for that frequency. That's from the bottom up. So your cumulative percent, this is the sum of relative percents across a series of intervals presented from the bottom up. This is your percentile rank. Total cumulative percent is equal to 100%. So this is an example of the cumulative percent of scores from the bottom up, also called percentile ranks. So again, we're just looking at the frequencies and the percent and the percents really accumulating. We'll do a small worksheet on this in a little while. So percent and quartiles, you should probably take a look at that. I believe that's already posted. If it's not, please let me know. Again, uh, just trying to get bright space to make everything available for you all to see really well. If you can't see something, I cover something in a lecture and you go, where the heck is it? Just tell me, I'll make bright space cooperate. I have no problem if I have to cage fight the learning management system to get something in there that will work. Sometimes it goes in really easy. Sometimes it's a little wonky. Just communicate and talk to me. And every assignment that I go over, you will be able to submit, see, et cetera. I have to know if you can't see it, but yet I can. Uh, so again, just talk to me, everybody, if you see any issues with that. So finding percentiles and overview. You want to identify the individual rank by converting the frequency distribution to the cumulative percent distribution. You have your percentile point, your PP. Question, does percentile, the X or percentile focus for each problem, the value or, of the score on the scale below which specified percentage of scores in a distribution fall, and your percentile rank, percentage of scores with values that fall below the specified score. Your critical interval, that includes a significant specific score or percentage deemed important and of course, critical. Some more terms to ponder, your real range. Like I said, it's plus or minus. Real means range, plus or plus 0.5 upper limit, minus five lower limit. The percentage with real range, the range with distance between the cumulative percent of the critical interval is the highest percent minus the cumulative percent below the critical interval or the lower percentage. Your critical interval, or critical percent is located like this. Your 75th percentile falls at this interval. The cumulative percentage of scores for the business safety data. So let's find some percentiles. Identify your critical interval. Identify the real range. Your real range, you have the lower limit is equal to 0.5 less. Upper limit is equal to 0.5 greater. Your real range versus your observed range the real range includes your upper and lower limit. Your real range is one point greater because of that 0.5 we were just talking about. So continuing to find percentiles. Find the percent position of the percentile point. The distance percentile from the top of the interval is 85%. The critical percentile rank is 75%. The cumulative percentage of the critical interval is 61%. The total distance, 85% percent minus 61 percent is equal to 24 percent. You want to subtract the critical percentile rank from the top of the interval. If you do that, it's 85 percent minus 75 percent is equal to 10 percent. Then you want to multiply your fraction by the width of the real range. So we're going to divide 10 divided by 24 times 9, which is your real range or 3.75. Then we want to identify the percentile point. The top of the real interval is 98.5 points. Then we subtract 3.75 points, which equals 94.75 points. Therefore, the percentile point 
of 75% is 94.75. Percentile points and ranks continue. The position of the percentile point, or PPP, you subtract the specific point from the top percentage of the critical interval. The distance to subtract um, is PPP divided by the PRW times the RR is this distance to subtract percentile point, cumulative score of the critical interval, top of the interval minus distance to subtract, and we are done. SPSS. Now I'm gonna give you the directions. I will be happy to show you more SPSS. I'm having a slight issue with getting SPSS to run correctly on my computer. I reached out to the appropriate areas to make sure, in fact, I can get SPSS to run correctly on my computer. So stay tuned, you will get more SPS, SPSS stuff. So what you wanna do is enter the name of the measure into the variable tab, enter the values into the data view, select descriptive statistics and frequencies under analyze option menu bar in the dialog box select the variable to move into the variables box select ok or paste and click run frequency distributions for ungrouped data ungrouped data is a set of scores or categories distributed individually where frequency for each individual score or category is counted ungrouped when a number of different scores are small it's usually nominal. Remember, nominal is like an adjective, like telling a story, like storytelling. That's nominal or qualitative all day long. Nominal, qualitative, or categorical variables. To distribute, skip to the final for constructing a frequency distribution. Intervals are not going to be constructed in this case. Some examples with ungrouped data. A list of the number of naps children younger than three take per day. It's on our left slide right here. And the frequency distribution of these data are listed on our right side. Number of naps versus the number of naps children take per day. So we have histograms, those construct the frequency of continuous data that are grouped. To construct a histogram, follow the three rules. Rule one, your vertical X axis rectangle represents each interval and height or Y axis, which equals your frequency. Rule two, your base begins and ends at the upper and lower boundaries of each interval. Rule three, each touches adjacent boundaries of each interval. Then you have a graphical example here of our histogram. And continuing graphing distributions, continuous data, the frequency of polygons, frequency polygons summarize the frequency of continuous data at the midpoint, like right in the center. Midpoint is calculated by adding the upper and lower boundary of an interval then dividing by two. You also have an OGIV that summarizes the cumulative percent of continuous data. So here is an example of what a frequency polygon and OGIV looks like. Continuous data continued graphing distributions. You also have a stem and leaf display. This is a graph where each individual score is listed. Common digits are shared by all scores to the left. That's your stem and the remaining digits for each score listed to, the, listed to the right, which is your leaf. The stem is the first digits and the leaf are the last digits. This displays actual scores instead of frequencies. So here's an example of what a stem and leaf display looks like. A stem and leaf display in which every number has the same first digit is placed in the same row and the first digit of each row is placed in its own column Using new data, this displays two digits in the stem and displays two digits to in the leaf. We also have bar charts. This is going to summarize the frequency of discrete and categorical data in whole units or categories. Each category is represented by a bar. Bars do not touch along the x-axis. For example, here we have the number of naps. A frequency table left and a bar chart right are summarizing the average number of naps per day that mothers give their children who are younger than age three. So continuing graphing distributions discrete and categorical data, you also have a pie chart. This summarizes relative percent of discrete and categorical data into sectors and represents the relative percentage of the particular category. This is a pie chart for the distribution of educational attainment in those folks that are 25 years and older, which probably applies to you since you're in grad school. 
So let's stop our share. And all right, guys, let's talk about some practical examples of what I just talked about. So we're going to start with this, and this will be available to you in Brightspace. You can probably already see it now, but like I said, if there's anything I go over you don't see, um, you should absolutely be uh, able to complete all this. This is absolutely worth points. Um, the in class assignments are all worth uh, points, and you need all the points to get the grade that you want. Obviously, in the course, it's more than just Cengage, it's also the assignments that I give you guys. Uh, so let's go over just a few things today. So this first one, you guys can see my, my screen here. Pretty, pretty sure. Let me double check. Make sure you're looking at the right screen here. And yeah, you're absolutely looking at the right screen. Okay. So moving on. This is an opportunity to state whether each of the following research examples is best summarized as grouped or ungrouped data. So the first one is the time in seconds it takes 100 children to complete a cognitive skills game. Now the best way for you to do this assignment is to pause me. Guess, think about it. Is it ungrouped or grouped data? Think about your rationale and why. I'm gonna explain what these are to you, but the more you pause and think about it, the more it'll stick. And then when you're in that testing condition and you're taking a test later in this course, you'll probably be better at it. So we have the first one, the time in seconds it takes 100 children to complete a cognitive skills game. That is group data. It's group data because the time it takes to complete a cognitive skills game would be grouped into class intervals. The frequency of children would be grouped into each interval. This next one, the number of single mothers with one, two, three, or four children. So pause me, think about it. Hopefully you paused me. Ungrouped data. Sing single mothers with one, two, three, or four children would be listed in classes. The frequency of mothers would be distributed in each class. Next, we have the number of teenagers who have experienced who have experimented with smoking, yes or no. Well, this would be, take a moment, pause, You're unsure, keep listening, uh, ungrouped data, experimenting with smoking, yes or no, would be listed in the cl in classes, the frequency of teenagers, teenagers would be distributed in each class. Our next one, the handedness left, right or left-handed of gifted children. Well, what do you think that might be? That would be ungrouped data, handedness, right or left-handed would be listed in classes. The frequency of gifted children would be distributed in each class. It looks like we skipped one. The age in years of freshman students in a local college. That would be grouped data. The age of freshman students in a local college would be grouped into class intervals. The frequency of freshmen would be distributed in each interval. So our next one, number six, because we just did five also. The number of symptoms of stress ranging between zero and 12 symptoms experienced by 180 war veterans. That would be group data. The number of symptoms of stress would be grouped into class intervals and the frequency of war veterans would be distributed in each interval. Number seven. The number of calories in school lunches in a sample of 32 local middle schools. That would also be group data. The number of calories in school lunches would be grouped into class intervals. The frequency of schools would be distributed in each interval. How about number eight? The number of hours of sleep per night in a sample of 60 patients being treated for depression. That would also be group data. The number of hours of sleep per night would be grouped into each class intervals. The frequency of patients would be distributed in each interval. Number nine, the marital status, single married divorced in a sample of 96 individuals reporting high levels of life satisfaction. 
that would be ungrouped data, marital status, single married and divorced, that would be listed in classes. The frequency of individuals would be distributed in each class. Number 10, the number of traffic violations ticketed during a three month period in one of four high crime communities. That would be ungrouped data. The names of the four high, high crime communities would be listed in classes. The number of traffic violations ticketed would be distributed in each class. Next, we are going to state whether a cumulative frequency, relative frequency, relative percent, cumulative relative frequency, or cumulative percent is most appropriate for describing the following situations. For cumulative distributions, indicate whether these should be summarized from the top down or bottom up. So, number 11, the frequency of businesses with at least 20 employees. This would be cumulative frequency from the top down. We know this because of our keywords, at least. Number 12, the frequency of college students with less than a 3.0 GPA. That would be cumulative frequency from the, from the bottom up because it's less than. Those are our keywords to know it's from the bottom up. So from the bottom up, less than, from the top down, at least. So first two are cumulative frequency. This is from the top down. This is from the bottom up. Next one is the percentage of women completing one, two, three, or four tasks simultaneously. That would be a relative percent. Number 14, the proportion of pregnancy, and going back to 13, is it, they're, they're being compared to each other. That's why it's a relative percent, okay? The proportion of pregnancies performed in public, public or private hospitals. That would be a relative frequency. The percentage, so percentage is percentage proportion is usually frequency is another sort of keyword to think about. Uh, the percentage of alcoholics with two or more years, with, nope, the percentage of alcoholics with more than two years of substance abuse, that would be a cumulative percent top down more than two years to get to the bottom back to zero. So think about how the information is being described. Number 16, the proportion of Americans earning 30,000 at most. That would be a cumulative relative frequency, bottom up. Number 17, the frequency of hospital visits per year in a sample of diabetics. That would be a relative frequency because again, they're being compared to each other. Number 18, the proportion of elderly patients consuming at or above 1400 calories per day. That would be a cumulative relative frequency top down. Keywords again, at or above. 19, the percentage of athletes training at or below a six hour per week. That would be a cumulative percent bottom up. Keywords again, at or below. And lastly, the percentage of men in one of six physically demanding occupations, that would be a relative percent. So hopefully, I've given you an opportunity to get a pretty good sense of some of these additional concepts today. There will be more lectures. I feel like the feedback with no one emailing me to just sort of do those, um, not really extemporaneously, but just I record them and post them to you. Uh, if, you're, if you would like a synchronous component and you would like to have a set class time or a time to ask me questions or you would like office hours, please reach out and email me. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about group data, ungrouped data, relative percent, cumulative percent, cumulative relative percent, as well as uh, proportions. Uh, look forward to giving you another lecture very soon. Stay tuned. Uh, feel free to ask questions, reach out to me along the way. This is a stats course. You should absolutely be on top of the assignments, watching these lectures and getting everything done 
as quickly as you can. This class goes for eight weeks. We are in week one. We will cover approximately a week or two or more every week, depending on what we need to do to get through all 17 weeks in 18 weeks. Uh, so far, I've heard from a few of you. I think you guys are all doing awesome. No exams yet, they are coming, uh, but just keep watching these videos, asking questions. Like I mentioned in my first video, a very high percentage of my students do well in stats because of the lectures and my availability. If you're stuck, I need you to tell me. I can absolutely get you unstuck, but you gotta communicate. You can reach me at jkmac at ferrum.edu. You can call me or text me 786-879-0179. I might not respond immediately, but if I can respond immediately, I will, and I will get back to you quickly. Keep up the great work, everybody. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in class or the next video. Take care.